What you doing? I'm the AC Stories, your Otaku Tainer for this Otaku Tainment Reviews. I am talking about a brand new series called Shadow Eliminators or Ruru Senki by Kento Amemiya, with translation by Dan Luffy and lettering by Reno Mappa. This is a weekly Shonen Jump series, also on Manga Plus, that came out on December 3rd, 2023. The first chapter is Layers of Shadows, which is the typical first chapter of 55 pages. Kento Amamiya only had previous one-shots, of course, the one-shot for this, and then also one called Shimigami that came out last year. Also, random thing, uh, Kento apparently becoming a popular manga name because last week's new series, Green Green Greens, <laughs> that creator is also named Kento, and then a series that keeps getting compared to this I'm seeing a lot, Phantom Seer, also a Kento. <laughs> So, I don't know what the coincidence is with that, but uh, enough of one for me to mention it. I already said this series is getting compared to Phantom Seer. Also, Weekly Shonen Jump already has New Age Exorcist, so there's that. It shouldn't be competition, but it is competition because they do feel very similar. And also, there's like a JoJo kind of feel to it with how the, <laughs> I call them stands. Um, but they're called um, Kas Kasane uh, and kind of just how they look and how they come out so there's a lot that this could be compared to it's another exorcist uh, kind of exor yeah exorcist manga style and also takes place in the school so it feels a lot like Noah's exorcist but there is some creativity that makes it stand out uh, comparing it a lot to like threads literal threads cloth stuff like that which is something i haven't really seen so there's that interesting aspect I also like the main character who is yayoi asakaze um he's the public morals committee vice chairman at moribe high school um a lot of people also call him justice man but really his philosophy i guess is more that he's against injustice and unfairness and he, he's the interesting he's not going to be the main focus yet at least with this first chapter it's, but more like the main narrator more the main perspective of who we're going to be seeing the story from kind of like a lucy and natsu kind of pairing from fairy tale uh yeah lucy also is a wizard and uh can be strong but it's mainly focusing on Natsu this is kind of the feeling I'm getting with Yayoi Asakaze just a normal guy yeah kind of has his own history and stuff but it's mainly him and his relationship with Aoyaba Kuramori the new transfer student who literally jumps out a chance to help people literally jumping off a bridge to help someone get a piece of paper that kind of floated away but yeah, also going to be the main exorcist or the shadow illuminator. They never actually say exorcist, I'm pretty sure. But he has earrings he can't take off. He has a not a tattoo mark that he has for some noble reason. Just a mysterious person. And someone Asakaze is very suspicious of right away. Their first interaction comes when Asakaze is shutting out late students from coming into school. Literally shutting the gate right in their face. But... Kuramori jumps over this gate. Of course, Asakaze has a problem with it because that's not fair. He shut out everyone else, but it doesn't matter. He cut to their classroom, realizing Kuramori is the new transfer student, and everyone's, you know, of course, fascinated with him. He doesn't like the fact that he has earrings and tattoo, but he already explained those. Then later, we see Asakaze still following Kuramori around because of the suspicion we see there's sensei fuyuna uh getting bullied by students by throwing a person from a tree which <laughs> grimoire jumps up gets it down jumps back down that's it i don't know how a teacher lets st students bully them but it's because the students explain they knew Fuyuno Sensei doesn't get mad or really disciplined students, I guess. But I don't know. But right after this, Kurumori senses a hollow, which Asakaze follows into. And it's this girl freaking out because she can't draw and is maybe jealous of someone else. We just see, you know, little bubbles of this girl's insecurities. And then Grandma, yeah, probably not Kurumori's real grandma, but that grandma character we pretty much see in everything. Maybe she's in it very briefly, but 
pretty much shows up to explain that hollows are like a den for these creatures called threads. Yeah, they're not just threads like magical wisp of whatever. They're actual creatures, which is an interesting thing because they literally just look like little wisps. But they apparently wrap around shadows and that's what's happening to this girl. Uh, just cling on to their insecurities. Uh, and then gives Kurumori this spinning thing that wraps up the threads, which took me a while of I went through this chapter actually a few times and it took me until the last time to realize it literally is wrapping them up like threads which is an interesting thing and it makes for you know the whole like cloth of stuff and these shadows being layers of shadows like cloth it, everything comes together which is me already jumping in the title but yeah uh, Asakaze realizes this is beyond injustice and just passes out so through some nagging of the grandma character who i don't think we get an actual name besides just grandma so far we learned that Krimori came to Moribi city because it's a beacon for the other world yeah then asakaze finally wakes up um gives Krimori a rectifying chop asks the grandma for permission first which i don't know why unless it's going to become like a signature move for asakaze it was kind of just cheesy and out of nowhere it it doesn't I don't know. It's kind of like just setting up for a comedic moment, but it doesn't fit. It just feels too cheesy. We also learned that the girl's being taken care of by an expert. We don't know who that expert is. I'm assuming it's the girl that was also on the title page because we never see the girl in this actual chapter or who the expert is. So that can be my only guess. It's really weird that you include this Ram girl on the title page if you're not going to show her in the first chapter. I don't know, but she must be important later. And also just goes into this whole other trip of like, oh yeah, it's just going to be more high school students popping out being like, oh, you're actually part of this whole otherworldly squad, blah, blah, blah. But, but okay, sure. We also learn even more about Threads, where that they broke it up now, or that they're explaining it now, because of course it comes later. Uh, when the Threads fully take control or completely cover someone they become a uh, kasane which is what we saw that's kind of what the stain looking things are and then during this explanation we see a panel of a different woman that's not the girl we just saw and it is since this is all coming from like asakaze's perspective pretty much it kind of implies that asakaze may have already had an experience with something like this before which is interesting. I don't know if that's just a random thing. It's just using any random woman just as a, a way to explain this. But that's an interesting thing. They could have just showed a flashback of that exact same girl. But there, it's something suspicious that Asakazi was, first of all, even able to enter a hollow because Kurumori was surprised by that. But Asakazi said it has nothing to do with him. And then we get a flashback of his grandfather that was a policeman that he idolized but was hit by a car and died probably isekai because why not um and that's where he gets his whole thing from and he kind of was like you know uh doing justice what should be right but then it's not so much justice because his grandfather died when he really shouldn't have because why of all people this good man hit by a car this is me looking a lot more into it this flashback isn't this long but this is where you get his whole philosophy from. And then, while leaving, Asakaze runs into one of the bully girls who tells him that the Fumi Sensei is doing something weird to the other girl. Asakaze runs, finds her, and interesting thing is the manga and us as a reader, we arrive at the scene before Asakaze and we do not see anything. All we see is Fuyuno standing there and then the other girl kind of floating on the air. It's not until Asakaze arrives that we actually finally see the stand. It's going to be hard to call them Kasane and not just stands because they seem so much like banded monster strand stands, which is what I'm trying to call them. But yeah, once he arrives, we see this Kasane, not stand. And then Fiona with like this black mask flap over her, kind of like, you know, a cloth or something like that because it's the threads wrapped around her. It's, but they look like bandages, the monsters, which kind of weird. I guess it could be like actual cloth bandages, which could be a real thing. Um, and it makes sense because they're insecure, kind of like breaks them and stuff like that. 
But she's talking about this is her justice. You know, she's possessed, so it's probably just everything just spilling out of her. But then Oscar Calzay goes on that he doesn't believe in justice. And this is when it really stands out because it's been mentioned before, but it wasn't until this scene I was like, oh, this is his real philosophy. He's not for justice, even though he's justice man, he's really against injustice. And I didn't realize it said it before until going back through. And it's like, oh, this was already sprinkled throughout the chapter really well done with the foreshadowing because yeah you might catch it right away but it's not till this big moment it's like i don't believe in justice i'm just against injustice and it's like okay that's really cool i'm really liking asakaze as a character but he's kind of useless because he's trying to help and he can't do anything until kurumori finally arrives to help so when kurumori actually is there he's kind of really cocky about it he's like oh i thought this you weren't going to get involved with this but then it goes into like well what's kurumori's motivation and that is he didn't protect someone that he wanted to protect uh there's no atonement for him he'll never forgive himself so now he's just trying to make sure it doesn't help happen to other people he uses an unmasking jutsu and his own hooded stand comes out <laughs> kasane uh and it, of course it looks really cool also just you know bandages which is oh it also reminds me of a jean kind of kind of the style and how these look i just realized that now hmm, interesting of course it is seems like a separate entity but also kind of not because it still seems like uh fuyono was the one doing it and kuramori was the one doing the stuff so it kind of just feels like a possession more than anything but yeah when he uses this um, he has a broken handcuff and it looks like it kind of attaches or the handcuff attached to the Kasane extends and I guess they attach. You never see the actual attachment but I assume it's connected them together. Also, we're, another interesting thing is he uses this unmasking jutsu. He doesn't have a mask on. It could be, you know, metaphorical mask, whatever. But after this, we see a lot less of his face. Throughout the rest of this encounter, we don't pretty much see his full face at all. At most, we get like an eye, which before, you know, very expressive face. So, I don't know if that's just me looking into it too much or if it's an intentional thing. He also uses like a blade to fight with. Also, like I said, it's not really his Kasane doing it, but his blade only cuts Kasane's. Um, and then he also rips off the layers we don't really see it we kind of just see cool fight and cut and then he says and rip off layers and you just see like shreds go around so layers shadows cloth ripping off cloth i really liking this uh probably only lasts for the first chapter probably explain a bit more but i feel like paying this much detail to the whole like threads and cloths and layers stuff like that clothes probably not going to last too long but we'll probably get explanations when needed but it was really really heavy in this chapter it's the next day and of course everyone was saved but the girls in Furuno don't remember of course that means Asakaze remembers still um and Kurumoros want to recruit people with shadows around their hearts uh, Asakaze makes them change it to more removing shadows which, that's, it was a weird thing. You're recruiting people? Uh, it, it should be, you know, you're eliminating shadows, which is what we get is a flyer for, oh, shadow eliminators and the whole thing. And also because it's cool with it. Uh, and that's where the chapter ends. So we're good to see where this relationship between the two, other than being friends probably, um, is going to go. And... Kurumori, yeah, seems like a typical shonen character. Asakaze, you know, has that like strict kind of thing, just like um, uh, Itita from like My Hero Academia. Is that his name? Sure. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. But we also see a lot, but we never see that kind of character as the main character. So maybe sometimes, but not like this. So that's what I'm excited for, and that's why I feel like will help this stand out, because it is kind of similar to other things, just with. Yeah, done in a slightly different uh, layer, you know? Uh, everything's kind of similar, but this cloth stuff, uh, Masakaze's type of character as the main protagonist, narrator, perspective, all of it's really cool. I'm looking forward to it. Of course, I expect Asakaze to also start getting powers. We know he can see stuff when others can't. So, uh, it might get a lot more stereotypical. It will unfortunately have to face uh, the competition with Noise Exorcist, which not my favorite. It's so very stereotypical. This one 
doesn't feel as searchable. It feels like it would be really cool, and that might be its downfall, is that it will end up being, uh, start being too unique and too good that people won't like it, and it'll have to start trying to fit into those tropes a lot more, and then that's where the downfall will probably be, because uh, Nuri's Exorcist, too much just fan service overall. That's all it feels like, and I don't feel like this will set itself up for fan service as much, and People don't like that. Also, things I like end up uh, doing pretty bad. So that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, I almost thought about doing a weekly series of this, but it's not unique enough for me to really do that. So we'll see what else comes out, what other new series, and maybe I will. Who knows? But last thing I always want to leave off on is talking about the title. Um, it's already obvious. I pretty much already mentioned where the titles come from. Shadow Illuminators, it was on Kurimori's flyer. That's what it's going to be. It's a cool name that may be just too obviously cool. That kind of makes it cheesy again. And it doesn't really fit with the whole, like, threads and kind of thing. I don't... But I can't think of anything else. Shadow... Weavers? Shadow... Snippers? <laughs> no. All that sounds stupid too. Illuminators, yeah, I guess that's good enough for now. I did a Google Translate for like what Ruru Sinki means. And it said war history. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. But so that's weird. I don't know what I don't know where that comes from. If that's supposed to mean something or I mean it's Google Translate. It's probably not that reliable. Now the chapter title already referred to this. Layers of shadows, the whole third thing, that's Kind of obvious too. They also say it quite a bit. Layers of shadow. So, really, <laughs> overall, it really wants to like really nail in that whole thread stuff. So maybe it will stay consistent and not just forgotten about and dropped, which it feels like is usually what happens with stuff like that. But that is all I have to say about Shadow Eliminator. So new series, I think it's really cool. Yeah, not the most unique, but do enough unique stuff in it to make it stand out for me but let me know what you think you might agree disagree there's plenty to talk about it um you can leave comments you can find me on social media the ac stories email me at these stories at gmail.com you also have a discord you can join low group there and we can keep chatting about this and hey i also have a kofi i want to thank the kofi members I already have vix lab and julio vasquez if you also want to join and support me on kofi that's an option i'll leave links to everything in the description but if you like what I had to say, go and give it a like. If you want to easily keep up with me, go ahead and subscribe. And hey, if you want to help me also keep growing too, go ahead and share this with people you think will also like it. And, you know, like manga, like these kind of reviews, I will appreciate that too. But that is all I have to say about this very first chapter of Shadow Eliminators by Kento Amemiya. I've been your Taku Tanner, the AC Stories. Until next time, thank you so much and bye.